Hello, everyone, and everyone on the live stream. So I am Ryan Albrecht, and I'm the lead front-end engineer uh, for Session Replay at Sentry. Uh, and so because we're coming from Sentry, I want to talk about bugs and how to fix them faster with Session Replay. Bugs and debugging, uh, always a problem. I think everyone in the room is the, is the cause, uh, so you all have yourself to blame. Uh, but we're going to make it a little bit easier today with Session Replay, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, there's four things I want to walk through today. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so uh, I'm just going to get right to it. But basically, look out for the privacy. We're going to talk about dev tools and how we're bringing that from the browser into Sentry so you can debug whatever's going on on other people's computers. Um, and of course, because this is React Conf, I'm going to talk about how this is React aware and all the little tricks and things that we're trying to do to make it more of a, a React aware experience. Um, and we're also going to talk about hydration errors, my favorite bug that it seems to be impossible to solve, uh, and how we're going to make that a little bit easier when it happens in production. So that's a big, big difference. Um, so let's get down to it. So this is my website. Uh, it's taking over the world right now on um, pokeytalk.com or whatever. Um, it's basically a, a marketplace, a, a storefront where you can see all the Pokemon. Yes, we've caught them all, in case you're wondering, uh, except for Charizard. He's out of stock right now. But um, you can basically browse the site, see some Pokemon, add to the cart. When you're ready to make a purchase, check out. Very simple stuff, right? Uh, so earlier this morning, I was waking up and uh, noticed I had an error on my site. Uh, so Sentry alerted me to this, and it was a network error not the most descriptive. It says Ajax response returned 500. Uh, so that's not good, but this is incredibly not helpful. Um, luckily, Sentry has collected a lot of information and is uh, trying to make this an actionable ticket. So let's see what we have. Um, one of the first things we have here is a stack trace. So we can see that this is coming from our API post uh, helper. Uh, so we've unminified the, the stack trace. We can see what the code was that I actually wrote. Uh, but it, this is still actually not super helpful. We can see the same message here, API response returned, and I know it's a 500. What I would really like to know is what was the request actually, like what URL did we hit? Um, so that's kind of missing. Yeah, if I'm going to reproduce this, I have to like trigger a 500. Um, so this is actually where session replay comes in, because I don't actually have to trigger this. Someone already has. And with session replay running, we can see exactly what they did. So we keep scrolling here, and this is the session replay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and give you the preview. Uh, so here's our user session. Right in the middle is when the error happened. And with session replay, we're going to be able to see what happened before the error, but also what happened afterwards, and be able to tell if this was a, a serious error or not. So let's give this a run through. So here's the user. They've clicked this button. They're clicking around. I guess they're waiting for it. And then there's the error, and there's the error message. So we'll pause it there. Not a serious error. The error message popped up. Um, presumably, they were able to try again. We, let's, let's dig in deeper. So by looking at the full replay here, we're going to see what happened and dive into this. So because it was a network error, and if I click this, I can go back, what I'm going to do is start with looking at the network tab. But even before that, I can see that there's two errors here at about the same time. So what we, what we can see is that even though the front end, or what we can see is that the back end threw an error, and then the front end didn't handle it. So if we had two teams, you might be thinking one team might fix it and the other one won't. But by co-locating this information together, um, we know that this is actually one problem, and it's just popping up in two different places. So anyway, network error. Let's look at the network tab. Uh, and jump down to that timestamp. Do, do, do. There it is, the post 500 error. It just jumps out right at you. Um, and so now we've just learned what was it that they were trying to do and what was the endpoint that they were trying to call. Uh, so my reproduction steps here are now possible, whereas before it was impossible. You might also notice that this replay kind of looks like the website, but it's a little bit hard to use. I'm going to zoom in again here. Um, that's the privacy stuff working. So by default, I have no idea what's on your website. I have no idea what's on my website some of, some of the times. And so Sentry takes the position that anything on the website might be privacy, or might be PII, and might be sensitive um, for us to capture. And so by default, we're scrubbing everything. And this is happening on the browser. Nothing, nothing is escaping 
um, onto our servers or out of really the, uh, the user's browser. So you can see here, um, all the Pokemon names that they had purchased are starred out. All of the pictures, which might be user generated or might be profile pictures or anything like that, all blocked out and this is happening on the browser. And then of course you can peel it back. And so on this site, we've noticed that the uh, menu and the logo or the, the page title, those are, those are very static. Um, so we can see those. We've chosen to reveal those. Uh, privacy is very important. Um, getting back to debugging. Um, I'm not going to jump into the code because this is actually just an if statement that throws the 500, so it's not too exciting to look at the code right now. Um, but if it were a more complicated problem, what we can actually do is opt in, because of privacy, to capturing request and response bodies. Um, so as your page is making requests and responses, um, as if you were looking at the dev tools in the browser, we can see the data here as well. So it's blocked in the, in the left side here, but on the right side, we can see what they were trying to purchase, and there was four different Pokemon, nothing too crazy. Um, but the response is what was giving us the, four, the 500, so let's click into there. And now this is actually pretty useful. It's an inventory system error, invalid ID. So one of these Pokemon is an invalid ID, and it's even giving us uh, file names and line numbers. So now not only do we know the URL that was hit, which we didn't before, but we know what the actual error was on the server. We've been able to connect it, and we can see what the result was in the UI. So this is just one of the ways that Session Replay makes uh, debugging so much better. Connecting all of the data that we, can, that we have uh, and putting it under one umbrella. Um, we talked about uh, errors and backend errors. Uh, we also have trace data, so performance. If you're looking at a slow uh, transaction or a slow page load, when you see the loading indicator on the left side, you can look at the tracing data and figure out what was the database call that caused it to wait. Um, OK, so privacy. We talked about um, bringing in the dev tools here. Now I want to talk about the React-specific stuff. Uh, so one thing we've always had on Sentry is the notion of breadcrumbs. And it's always been leading up to the error. So with Session Replay, of course, you can see breadcrumbs before and after an error. But you can, now we're introducing uh, React-aware breadcrumbs. So I'm going to try to find one here. Uh, the checkout button. Oop, let's not click that. So the checkout button is obviously checkoutbutton.tsx. It's a React component. Uh, and with our new um, Webpack build uh, plugin, we're able to annotate all of your React components so that way when an error happens and as we're tracking breadcrumbs, you can see exactly what components were um, used. So in this case, if I wanted to know which button did they click, maybe there's multiple checkout buttons on the page, I can track this CSS selector through the main tag, through the shopping cart component, through the form element, and know that it was the checkout button uh, that had the, the interaction. So if there was, for example, a missing loading indicator or no response, I know that I have to go in here and edit that on-click handler. So I think that's pretty cool. This bringing React in, um, to the debugging experience, whereas before, you know, you have your dev tools in um, development time, you can get the same kind of experience in production. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is hydration errors. And so we recently um, poured our old documentation site from Gatsby into Next.js uh, for dog fooding, but also because Next.js is just so awesome. Um, and that caused a bunch of hydration errors. And so normally, if I was making small commits, it would be easy to say, like, oh, there's a new error. Let's look at the recent commits and try to fix it. But in this case, we had a big problem because it's like thousands of lines of code, and there's tons of hydration errors all over the place. Uh, so this is, this is a real century right now. Um, but of course, everybody's anonymous, so I can show it to you. Um, so we caught some hydration errors. And this is what it looks like. Um, so here on the left is, of course, our, our doc site. Somebody's using dark mode. Uh, and we've got here three hydration errors. I'm really looking forward to React 19 when this just goes down to one. Uh, but in the past, when you're in production, the hard part of, of solving these things is that it just says, hydration error, go see React, uh, whatever that error code is. I think there's a couple of them. It's really kind of useless. Uh, and so now what we're doing is we're going to be able to show you a diff of exactly what changed. And so here is the page, and here is the diff of the code. And now I can tell you what happened in production and why there was a hydration error. And 
In this case, the style tag has now been added, and there's some HTML that probably got changed. It's actually kind of hard to look at and kind of hard to read. Maybe this docs layout thing is important. Uh, so we also have a visual diff, and that looks pretty strikingly different. So whatever is going on on this page, I can tell, uh, and I can dig in. And of course, because uh, replay is an HTML snapshot of the page, this is not just an image. I can right click on it and inspect the DOM on both sides. So whatever is different, you can get the text, uh, textual diff of it and also the visual diff um, in order to debug things. I think that's pretty cool, right? I've got some other more subtle examples here. So here's another hydration error. It's the same kind of crazy text at the beginning. But this one, see if you can spot the difference. It's actually this menu bar up here. And yes, this is all HTML, so you can hover over it and see it. So something is causing this uh, to load in afterwards. And also this sidebar thing here. So these are real production issues that we're going to go fix next week, because uh, we just launched this new site. Um, but, uh, but now we can, because we have hydration errors with session replay. So I hope you guys can all give it a try. And thank you for listening. And I uh, hope to see you soon on Discord and everywhere else. Bye-bye. <laughs>